Dave Clark. Hello. Oh, I know a little secret about you. You live here in uh, Amsterdam, that's correct, right? I don't think that's a secret. I think it says everywhere that I love Amsterdam and I, I live here, yeah. Okay, how long have you been here? How did you come to move here? What was the story behind that? Oh, it's a big story. How long have you got? <laughs> All day, mate. All day. Okay, well, I first did my first international gig in Amsterdam. It was either 1989 or 1990, before all of these people were born. Uh, well, apart from her, maybe. And, um, <laughs> hello. Um, and it was at a place in Regulo Dwarstraat yep. called Richter's. Yep. Millie Vanilli came down. Seriously. There were, the joke that I always say, but you've never heard it, so I can get away with it. He was talking to me, and then the words came later. <laughs> it was like, anyway... <laughs> And they, they came down, and that was my first international gig. And I looked over this place, and I thought, wow, I love this place. At that, at that time, I had record shops like Buddhist, yep. lots of things going on. And it was just an amazingly beautiful place. It was a bit scruffy in those days, not like it is now. And I always thought, I want to come back here. Actually, I'd like to live in Amsterdam. And I was a young boy, and I thought, yep, I definitely want to live in Amsterdam. It was one of those dreams which you can't really make happen when you're on 45 pounds a week. Mm. So I, I know that you're, uh, I mean, you're always playing around Amsterdam. We see your name no, everywhere. No. You, you, you always seem to be playing down at, uh, oh, what's that small place? Remember the, um, what's it called, guys? The small place. The, uh, what's it called? The small, the small bar place. Okay, we can cut that out. Let's cut that stuff. Yeah. On, the, on, the, on the end, from the lighter plane. The lighter plane, that little bar. No, I never did. You never played it, I'm I only sure played you once. Seen you. I only played once. Okay. So okay. we'll cut that bit. Yeah. yeah. So ah. let's go. Yeah, I forgot the name of it. So back to the. Uh, <laughs> you've obviously been to the Amsterdam Dance event uh, hundreds of times, or 16 times at least, maybe, perhaps. Uh, do you find that you increase your social network here, or. Um, it's weird actually, when that Amsterdam dance event was first happening and I was half here, half in England, I'd always feel really happy that everyone was coming here and then I'd feel really deflated after everyone left. But since I've been living here for good for, for a few years now, um, I have a, a social circle here now, so I feel like, hey, everyone's coming. And then when everyone goes, okay, but I still have a social circle now. So it's a, I really like it. It's, the thing I like about Amsterdam dance event is like it's relaxed. Not in that traditional fucking stupid English way of like Amsterdam is a relaxed city, huh? Yeah. It's relaxed because it works. You don't need to drive. You, you walk everywhere or you public transport it. And everyone's just chilled. And it's just a nice environment. You got a bike? I've got two bikes. <laughs> I've got three sk four skateboards. Nice. Long boards? Uh, one long board, yeah, from the gammy leg. Yeah, I've got like high polyurethane uh, risers, risers in there and uh, 75 mil cryptos. Oh, nice. Six to nine? Uh, no, they're fake, man. Oh, six to nine is the, the boss. It's fake. Back to your music. You said that you were in uh, Napoli for uh, Tech Napoli. She's gone already. Last week. Um, tell us about your international travel. What are you up to these days? Oh, last week I was in Naples and Zagreb. Uh, this week I'm in Amsterdam. Party on, dude. Uh, next week I am partying with the Germans. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm staying in the Dresden. Oh, that's a good place. Yeah, yeah we don't want to mention... Um, I was in, so I'm in Dresden, I'm in uh, Loch Wichtenstein, something like that. Say that again today. And then I'm also in Fraga in Spain for Halloween. Okay. So yeah, international travel still happens, and that's also another reason why I love it here, because Schiphol rocks. Yeah, it's the best airport in the world, right? Pretty much, yeah. Definitely the best airport in Europe by far. Yeah. Six runways, the amount of delays that I've had compared to, say, London Gatwick, like, I used to get delayed almost every single week, actually, with no reason, no, no polite reason, nothing given, no one cares. And I think, skip all, I think maybe I've been delayed or waylaid maybe once or twice a year. It's very, very good. So moving on to the production side of things now, uh, do you spend much time in the studio these days? What are you up to? Yes, I do spend time in the studio. I'm actually working with a Dutch guy called Mr. Jones, uh, who was actually in the demolition panel last year, uh, one of his tracks, Zoom 37.0, I think it was. I've been playing a lot of his music on radio, and I thought all my life when I've been making music, aside from the odd collaboration for Devil's Advocate, it's been making it on my own. And I like this guy's music, but actually I wanted to see him, and I, I met him, and I thought he's a really easy guy to work with. And I'm actually having really good fun in the studio. It's like bouncing ideas, so sometimes like he could be sitting in there, and he'll be playing around, I'll be just like swiffering around, like cleaning and shit up, and like polishing stuff. 
hearing and then I'll step into the hot seat and then change things. It's actually a really nice and relaxed way of bouncing ideas. I've never had that in the studio, bouncing ideas backwards and forwards. And yet, when you're both technically proficient, you know, it's not like one of these, like, like you know, builder artists that can't even sort of elaborate what they're saying. I want eye hats there. Make them a bit shinier. It's not like that, you know. It's not like, oh, I really like this record. Make a record, it sounds like it. It's actually weird, technically, both technically proficient. And just love getting deeper and deeper and we're, we're using logic at the moment right. and oh, it's incredible We've got f over 500 plugins so you mentioned technical proficiency you're obviously very confident now with logic and you're a good engineer you you know you're quite you're capable with the mix downs and stuff yeah. like that what sort of uh do you what desk do you use what sort of equipment have oh, you got in your studio secret shit man <laughs> okay okay shit. so tell us about your djing uh, setup what what do you get involved with what do you use um pioneer 800 mixer uh i just like the flexibility of that and the funness of it it has fun yeah mixes should be fun uh, I used to use the Technics uh, CD turntables but uh, they stopped making them and they become very difficult to source now so I used uh, Pioneers or Denons and uh, I have an effects panel on the outside I'm waiting for the you know the Alessis iPad yep. uh, thing I'm waiting for you know like uh, sound toys I think would be rather nice if sound toys made like a DJ plug-in for the iPad uh, that'd be fun Okay. Actually. And I saw, you, I heard you earlier mention that you you like to source your music from SoundCloud and yeah. like that. You actively hunt out yeah. your stuff because you know it it's important. It's, it's it's part of the job description, I think. Yeah, yeah. If you're not doing it, then where's the love? Yeah, yeah. So, but you still obviously get quite sent quite a lot of music, I imagine. Um, do you, I mean do you have a, actively have guys hunting out producers no. for you? You do that all yourself. Yeah. That's great. Although I do get some tips, you know, like uh, maybe like Psychotron will say, hey, you should check this out. Or you know, someone else will say, "Hey, you should check that out." But I wouldn't pay someone to go out there actively hunting. It's it's part of the enjoyment. It's like, you know, can you imagine like if you're doing like the gold rush, right? And then you do that, and then you're the one that finds that little gold nugget. How good does that feel? Then when someone actually gives you that gold nugget, and then it only has like a financial yeah. value. It doesn't have the value of emotion attached to it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're Dave Clark. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is three six five. What a legend. <laughs>